Hello, YouTubers. Baroness Cameron here. Um, I was just uh, going to... I never know what his name is. It's three Zs, or three Zs in the rest of the world, and five threes. So it's Z, 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 three, 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 three. Now, there may be something there that I'm completely missing. It wouldn't be the first time, but there you have it. Three Zs, five threes. Um, I'm currently slogging through his videos. It's going to take me a couple days. But um, he did a... Uh, I just watched one that he did on books. Um, and as you know, I'm a book fiend. And I've come up with uh, not necessarily books that you should read, but a list of sort of genres that uh, everyone should read. Um, and actually, excuse my reach. The first genre I want to deal with is reading a book written by somebody a hell of a lot smarter than you. Um, and with a guy like, say, Christopher Hitchens, that includes most of us. Um, but just the idea being that uh, like especially a guy like Hitch, who has opinions that a lot of people don't like. It'll challenge the way that you think, and you might learn something like that. Second one, biographies and autobiographies. Um, I just grabbed these off the shelf. This is uh, called I Couldn't Smoke the Grass on My Father's Lawn by Michael Chaplin, the son of Charlie Chaplin. Uh, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou, the uh, wonderful poet and great woman. And uh, this one's called Memoirs of a Revolutionary by Victor Serge. And it's just sort of a neat first-person take on history. It's not always completely truthful, but that's what makes it fun, the investigation. One of my personal favorites... Excuse me, I got the hiccups drinking too much Coke. Read something classical and huge. Because most people claim to have done it, but most people actually haven't. So something like, you know, Anna Karenin by... Tolstoy, uh, Don Quixote by Cervantes, or something like, you know, Moby Dick by uh, Herman Melville. Give it a try. I did actually slog through these three, and many like them, but it's just my way. Okay, our next uh, group of books. Something screwed up um, that you might not quite get first time around, but it's all about learning, all about thinking. Something, say, for instance, like The Glass Bead Game by Herman Hess. Um, At Swim Two Birds by Flannel Bryan. And and for the truly messed up, and not for the faint of heart at all, uh, My Mother Demonology, a novel by Kathy Acker. <laughs> messed up. Good book, but screwed. Okay. Um, social commentary. Always fun. Uh, something like The Culture of Narcissism by Christopher Lash. Great book. Uh, Culture of Fear by Barry Glasner. And for the ladies out there, this is a fun one. Uh, Promiscuities, The Struggle for Womanhood by Naomi Wolf. Another one of my personal favorites. Next classification. Something funny that is probably true. <laughs> I picked uh, two of the, uh, the new journalists. Uh, Tom Wolfe, this is uh, a read of his called The Purple Decades, it's a collection of his uh, articles and uh, another personal favorite Songs of the Doomed by the late Dr. Hunter S. Thompson as I said, it's entertaining but educational and probably true as well because they were kind of funny with their journalism that way. Moving right along in possibly the most boring video I have ever made um, Philosophy now, philosophy is definitely not for everybody, but there are different forms. Uh, like, for instance, you have Albert Camus, The Myth of Sisyphus. It's a collection of essays, all dealing with uh, the question as to whether or not, from a philosophical point of view, suicide is ever justified. The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir. I'm sure you can guess what that is about. Another fantastic woman writer. Great book. Or you can get one of these old anthologies. Uh, this one is just uh, Modern Classical Philosophers. Uh, it has 24 different guys in here. And it goes from the 1500s up into 
the uh, the late 1800s. And there's a lot of neat stuff in there, and also this way you can sort of, it's sort of like a little buffet, you can get a taste for some of the stuff that you like. Now, of course, you can go way back to, like, Plato, Aristotle, um, and that gang. Uh, moving right along. Something that's always a good read is a uh, an anthology of literature. Now, the only problem with these things are, is this one here is about uh, 56 years old or so. And of course, there are older ones. But uh, the way these things are put together, the way most groups of writing are put together, well, a group of writing is called a canon. Like, for instance, the, uh, the New and Old Testament are canons. They chose what went in and threw some stuff out. Much to Thomas's dismay, no doubt. Um, not to mention Judas. Um, but the thing is, is there's a lot of people who weren't um, considered worthy of the canon by the tweed jackets who put these things together. So the newer the anthology, usually the better you're going to get. Because, I mean, you get like Dorothy Warsworth and stuff like that. But there's a lot of women who are left out just because they wore skirts. And that was that. So a good literature anthology is always a good thing to have kicking around. So last, but definitely not least, uh, essays. You can get something like this, uh, Eight Modern Essayists, which has a, sort of like a, well, it is an anthology, a collection of different stuff. Once again, sort of the smorgasbord buffet type thing, so you can sort of pick and choose what you want. Or if you find somebody you like, you can do something like uh, Herman Hess, My Belief. I've always really, really quite, uh, quite liked this one. Uh, he's got one in here called On Little Joys. And if you get a chance to track that down, read it. It's fantastic. And then another personal favorite of mine, uh, Mr. Allen Ginsberg. Selected Essays. It's called Deliberate Prose. Uh, so that's sort of my rundown. Um, basically, as far as I'm concerned, anything you want to read, as long as you're reading, good on you. Uh, my apologies for the boring video, but the, the moment struck. About halfway through, I realized, my God, they're probably sleeping. But, hey, if a good book can't put you to sleep, at least talking about one might.